I mean, Gill um, stepped up tonight. Well, I think uh, Nettle's been playing like hard all year. Just a winning basketball player makes so many uh, things that the stat sheet doesn't really actually tell you what he, the impact that he has. He just plays with a pure heart. He plays hard. He, you can just see he enjoys the competition. And AG, I'm proud of him. He hasn't played much. The guy works harder than anybody on our team. He comes in every day. He comes in early. He's always cheering his teammates on. He's the first one up. He's always encouraging them. And sometimes uh, I've been on teams that don't appreciate that role, but I appreciate that, 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 that role that he has with our team. And it's great that he came in, gave us minutes. I felt that we needed a little jolt. We were too loose in that first half, just letting it. It was a summer league game, playing a pickup game. And um, we were going in, down a, a not a good road and we we're going to end up, you know, who has the ball last or who makes the two shots at the end type of mentality. But I thought his, him starting in the third quarter kind of gave us a little uh, sense of urgency. And, you know, they only scored, I think, what, 40, 41 points in that second half. Ava. Yes, yeah, Scott, I was going to ask more about the kind of defensive shift in the third quarter. Was there something said at halftime? Was it just um, Anthony bringing more of that energy? It looked like Brad and Russ were being more involved as well. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that was said at halftime was just wake the up. And, and the film session was really telling us that. And I, you know, we just said, you know, that all I had to do is just keep saying that after every film, after every clip. I thought we did. We came out with an urgency. Uh, this team hasn't won a game in a while. They're gonna, they're gonna want to, they're gonna want to win. They don't, they're not trying to lose. Uh, they wanted. They, we knew that we had to play with more urgency and 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 commitment and focus, and it had to be on the defensive end. We could score. Uh, we were turning the ball over too many times on offense, but I thought our defense. I thought Rolo. I mean, he didn't, he didn't get, he didn't have his, you know, his low post uh, opportunities as much, but. He impacted the game defensively, and they put some small lineups on it. I thought he did a good job also in that second half. And I, I believe this is your guys' um, longest win streak now uh, in a couple of years, I think since 2017. Um, I mean, what we ask, I feel like I ask you this every game, but just for that to happen this year um, when you're down two starters, uh, I guess, are you surprised by that at all? Yeah, you know, it's not – as this season has gone on, nothing is going to surprise me anymore because I'm always, I'm not like I'm expecting, you know, things to happen. I'm expecting things, uh, I just, I'm expecting guys to just keep fighting. And uh, did I anticipate we'd have a seven game win streak and we'd have, you know, 11 out of our last 16 games during a pretty tough stretch? Uh, no, but I just knew that we were just going to keep fighting. We got to stay hungry. and. Like Brad said it after the game, we've got to keep our head down. We've got to keep our head down and keep focused, and we haven't done anything yet. All we've done is won, won the games uh, seven in a row, but that's a great, it's a great feat, but we've still got a lot of work to do, and we're not where we want to, want to be. We want to get, into, get involved and stay involved, and who knows? We might be able to keep moving up. Chase. Uh, uh, Lou Dort seems like a pretty tough defensive matchup, um, but Brad also didn't seem to have much trouble with him at all. Why do you think he was able to have so much success in that matchup? Brad's one of the best players in the league, and, and he's up there with the league leading scorers, whether he's first or second. He, he, he's doing that. He's doing that on all 29 teams. He doesn't just only a few teams here and there. He's, he can score on anybody. He's that type of scorer. Uh, and we set great screens and Russell delivers the ball on target. So there's a, there's a combination on why, you know, Brad gets good looks and why Brad scores. It's obviously he's, his talent is through the rooftop, but he's also his big set great screens and, and the, the spacing guys, there's space in the floor and Russell delivers the ball onto him at, at, at the right time. So Dort is good. I mean, Dort, Dort is a, another young developing player that's going to be a, a, a probably one of the better two white players in the league. They got themselves a good one. And I don't even know if he was drafted. And uh, we mentioned the, the season long win streak, just what are some of the things over these 
these last uh, seven games that you think have really stood out that you'd like to keep rolling? Um, just, just playing with an edge, not worrying about, you know, who's in, who's out. We got to just scramble. We got to find a way like tonight. We played a lot of guys that, you know, played, you know, we didn't anticipate the injuries we would have in our two starters. Actually, I mean, really three starters, but we've, we found a way. I thought, hey, like I said, AG, I'm proud of him, and that's hard to do. But he's always, one thing about him, he's always locked in. And even during timeouts, he's, he's looking at the board like he's going to be subbed in. And I appreciate that, and I, I admire that. But I'm glad that he came in and made some shots. He gave us a big lift on both ends of the floor. That's obviously Russell and, and Brad are – they have monster games, and but they can't win a game by themselves. They they need the other guys to step up, and we've been we've been stepping up as a as a group uh, for each other. Fred, hey Scott, um, what allows Neto to be so good at kind of getting into passing lanes, poking the ball away, but but still not getting getting caught on the bad side of gambling? very often yeah because well he has a great pursue he doesn't you know you have a you have the, the crazy thing is i tell players all this all the time you have a you have a choice you can get screen or not get screen and he chooses not to get screen and if he does he he just doesn't die on it he's not a velcro he, he he goes around and 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 pursues the basketball and he has good anticipation his defensive instincts are good his defensive care level is good and that's why he's that's why he's plays. That's why he's played. That's why we're willing to go with the three guard lineup. Um, because it doesn't matter how I mean it's the 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 height of a player is so overrated. You know, this you know, everybody says, you know, that the heart is what counts, and that's true. There's been a lot of successful small players in the league that just have a big heart, uh, like Neto, but his heart is is much bigger than his game. Matt. Scott, I know you said a lot that once we just stack up games, we can really start to get into a rhythm. I guess, how have you seen that pay off defensively? Like, what are you guys kind of doing now that you, you really see the benefit of that rhythm? Well, I mean, we've had some, I don't even know if we've had like the consistency rhythm of players in and out. We just had, we just had games as consistently. And I think our guys are, you know, the last, I don't know, I wouldn't say they they bought in because I think they were always trying to buy in. It, we just didn't have a rhythm. We didn't have some, you know, the, early in the season and and then the, the COVID and the injuries. But now we seem to have enough healthy guys at the right time. And like I said, Rui will be back. Unfortunately, Danny's out, but Rui will be back and I don't know when, but I think that has actually helped us. The games with the majority of our guys getting some minutes, and I've cut down the rotations too. I don't. I try to stay with the nine-man rotation and, and give guys extra minutes so they can find a better rhythm. And I think that's also helped. I mean, it's takes it takes some guys out of the mix, but you know, my job is to put our put our team in the best position. Not you know every player. That's not the, how the league works. Is there something you're seeing with the defense that makes it particularly effective? Just guys closing out, making the right well, rotation? What is it well, that's yeah. going to to you? No, I, I think our bigs are doing a good job of, you know, if they're not if they're not altering a shot, they're there. Sometimes the, 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 the ball doesn't go in uh, to, the, to the key. And, our, and our, I think our guards are doing a better job of contesting shots. And like tonight in the first half, we had trouble staying in front of the ball because we were staying square. We were opening up and giving them driving angles. I told them during one timeout, some of our defensive footworks, I can go by you guys. And and that's and then we changed. I mean, sometimes you just, sometimes a little subtle adjustments help. And I thought that did. And and we did in the second half. But our, we were scrambling, as you saw tonight. There's there's probably twenty game or twenty plays in every every game. You have a a scramble situation you got to be key you got to keep thinking the next play the next pass and react to it and then just keep keep scrambling I thought we scrambled as well as we did in the second half than we've done all season 
All right, last question to Neil. Hey, Scott, on Rui, um, what is he currently able to do or not do? And what does he need to feel and maybe accomplish, like getting a workout or whatever that might be before he can return? Yeah, I think he, I think he got a, a, a small workout today. I thought he, I, mean, I could, maybe I'm mixing my days up. I thought he was going to get a small workout before the game. I haven't asked, obviously, the game and after the game, I haven't asked, but I think he's getting a, a small workout. I don't know what that means. I'd love to have him back the next game, but like all of our players, it's, it's more important that they just, they're, they're ready when their body tells them they're ready. And, and he's working. Our trainers are working, our performance teams, everybody is working, doing their job. But he's going to have to be on the court a little bit. I don't know if it was going to be tonight or if it was tonight, hopefully he comes back even, does even more tomorrow. But still feeling better uh, each and every day? Yeah, no, every day. I keep, I, 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 only, I don't like to ask players every day how you're feeling because I don't want to put that type of pressure on them. But every, I wait another, I wait every other day. I, so, but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I didn't ask them today, but from what they're telling me, he's feeling, he's feeling better every day. It's just, it's a matter of, you know, just a matter of hopefully not long. How enjoyable for you to share the court with Bradley and Russell? How easy you make your game? And do you believe that at this point of the season, as a team, you play the best basketball as a, as a team? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, uh, uh, after we got it going in the beginning of the season, uh, it was just a matter of guys staying healthy. Um, we got some tough injuries, guys missing a couple games, and uh, that kind of takes the rhythm of, uh, of our team. Uh, when we got the main guys playing most of the games, uh, we got everybody else going. I think that's uh, that's been the key for us uh, in this last stretch. Uh, playing with Russ and, and Bray makes it just easier for you, I think. I mean, at least me personally, uh, just open the court. Uh, Russ is a great playmaker, so he's gonna find you open. He's gonna uh, attack the pain and get everybody on him and, and, and create for others. And, and Bradley, he's gonna score, but also he's gonna bring a lot of people uh, to himself. So he opens the court a lot. So I think uh, that helps um, not only for me, but for most of the guys. Uh, but yeah, I think we're playing our best basketball uh, right now. Fred. <clears throat> hey, Howell. Um, I, I was just wondering, how do you weigh the process? You get, you get a lot of steals, but you're not really a gambler. How do you weigh the process of, of when to go for a steal and when you think it might leave your teammates out to dry? Um, I mean, I, I do gamble sometimes, um, not much, I think, but I think it's just being focused the whole time. Uh, you know, I think being ready, if you see an opportunity to, uh, to try to go for a steal or to get hands on the, on the basketball, I think, uh, I think it's a, a mental thing, you know? I think it's just being ready, being uh, in a position that you can explode out uh, anytime you need um, and just use my instincts. I think that's the, I think that's how I got most of my steals. And like you say, I try not to gamble a lot because um, sometimes if you do and you don't get it, you put the team in a bad situation. But um, I just try to use my instincts. Sometimes, I mean, most of the times uh, this season has worked. Sometimes I put the, the team in a, in a bad situation. But guys understand that that's my game, my game defensively. And, and they try to, like, support me even if, even if I uh, miss a steal and I put the team in a bad situation. They know. Uh, that most of the times I'm, I'm not going to do that. And, and when you came here, the, the Wizards already obviously had two, two point guards on the roster with, uh, with Ish ahead of you. And then I guess it was John at the time and, and then Russell. Did you expect to be getting this much playing time by this point of the season? You know, I mean, you, as a player, you always want to uh, get as much time, as much playing time as you, as you can. Um, to be honest, I didn't know um, our conversations in the summer wasn't like I'm going to play 30 minutes a game. Uh, but I think uh, just uh, earning my spot, you know, not stepping in anybody's foot, but just being competitive and just doing everything to help the team. And I think coach saw that on me and um, um, he's giving me the time, you know. Uh, so 
Um, honestly, I did not expect to be playing that much, but I'm happy I, I am, and I'm going to try to stay healthy and keep improving, keep helping the team, and uh, um, hopefully we can we can make that play in the playoffs and, and go far. Zach? Oh, well, just generally, how is um, in starting – uh, the last couple games and and has it changed kind of your prep now um, I know you started in Utah at Utah at one at one point but um, just going into the game with a different mentality or what's it been like um, I think the only thing that changes uh, you got to be ready from the start you know sometimes when you're coming out of the bench you've got uh, five seven minutes on the game to kind of like get you ready mentally and get you ready physically kind of like I'm a guy that needs to uh, do a couple of jumps and a couple of hops uh, before I get into the game. And when you start, you don't have that time uh, on the bench. I think that's the only thing you change, but I try to uh, start, start strong and, and bring the same energy that I bring coming out of the bench when I start. And um, I think that's what the team expect from me. And that's what I, what I gotta do, but I don't think it changed uh, uh, nothing on my game mentality. You're obviously getting more open looks with that starting unit. Is there a difference in like uh, your shooting because you can be a little bit more warm than before when you you're coming off the bench just cold sitting there? Um, I try not to think that. Um, I try to as soon as I step on the court, uh, I'll be ready to take the first shot. Sometimes it's more like a mental thing, you know. I I just got into the game. I gotta feel the basketball first before I take a shot. But I've been games that I don't play for a whole quarter and I just come in and, and knock two, three, threes in a row. Uh, so I think it's just a mental thing. I just gotta be tough mentally. Um, but I think it's when I'm playing the shooting guard and not the point guard, uh, that's what I have to do, you know, just space and be ready to take those shots. When I play the point guard and I'm playing more picking roles and creating for others and trying to find my own shot. I think that's the only thing that change uh, um, depending on who I'm playing with on the court. All right, last question, Chase. Hey, Aul, um, Anthony Gill got a, a rare opportunity tonight and really made the most of it. Coach Brooks said he was proud of him. Uh, just what did you think about him um, getting that chance and, and making the most of it? I mean, he worked harder than anybody uh, I've seen. I think uh, he's always on the court. He's always ready. He's always uh, with a great energy, with a great positivity, and I think he – uh, he brings that even when he don't play. So I think everybody on the team is happy for him. Uh, we know how hard he works. And, and honestly, he, I think he got a lot better from, from the beginning of the season, just getting the work in, working on his body and, and working on his game. Um, and uh, I'm glad he got the opportunity and I'm glad he, uh, he was big for us. You know, he brought the energy. He got a couple of rebounds. He made a, a, a three. And um, and uh, I, I'm very happy for him, and I think he uh, he's gonna stay ready and stay working. Um, that's just him. And this is uh, the longest win streak you guys have had in a few years, and you know, obviously, there's been some low moments this season for you guys. How gratifying is it to to be playing this well after all that you guys have been through this year? I mean, we got a lot of new guys on the team, uh, so it takes a little time to get everybody everybody going uh we we've know or uh what we can do since the beginning you know i think one thing that russ always tried to keep keep in our mind is how good we are even though we were not winning games at the beginning we had we we're having good games uh we beat some good teams uh so we know or or what we can do on this league and i think that's the most important thing and and not getting tired of doing the same thing over and over uh we've been doing for the last uh, seven, eight games, and we got to keep doing it to the end. Anthony, what has um, the season been like for you? How will just got finished telling us how much work you've been putting in, obviously with not a ton of practice time and not a ton of playing time until 20 minutes tonight. When have you been able to get on court and what have you been kind of focusing on? Uh, yeah, so I've just been really working hard all year, like, like uh, the guys have said, you know, for me, uh, finding my role here has been really important. I want to help as much as I can. Uh, when I told myself when I came in uh, was 
find a role and help out, you know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever coach needs, um, you got to be that guy. Um, so every day, uh, if we have practice or days off, I'm always in the gym, uh, just working as hard as I possibly can. Um, you know, there's a lot of us in the gym. It's not just me. Um, there's a collect, there's a collection of uh, a lot of us who are not getting the minutes, um, you know, on the court. So we have to do all the work behind the scenes and we really enjoy it. And when we get times like tonight, when we actually get to come in and, and work hard, uh, we love it. And we, we see you in games out there pacing. You're always like right on the front of the side, like in Rolo's face almost. But what's the key for you um, to staying locked in? Uh, it's a couple of things. You know, one, I want to let my teammates know I'm right there for them, even though I'm not on the court. Um, I want them to feel my support throughout the entire game. Um, and also, I, I just want to stay ready, you know, stay loose. I didn't know I was going to get in tonight. Um, and you got to keep your body ready throughout the whole, the whole game, even if you're not in. So I just had to stay ready. Chase. Anthony, uh, Neto actually went further than that. He said you're the hardest working guy he's ever seen. And um, uh, Coach Brooks said you might be the hardest worker on the team. So could you maybe elaborate on why you think they may say that? Like, what, what kind of things do you do to put in the extra work that these people are noticing? Uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's been big this year and every year, you know, what, no matter what team I'm on and where I'm at in the country or out of the country. Um, for to be the hardest worker, you know, I want to be the first one in the gym and the last one to leave. That's always my goal, um, you know, and it's good to see that, you know, you guys have noticed, you know, I don't do it for everyone to notice. I do it to, you know, support the team as best I can and set the tone as far as, you know, working hard. You know, I figure if I'm in the gym every day, then so can everybody else. And, you know, I, I just want to motivate everybody I can um, in whatever way I can. Fred. Anthony, uh, building building off of that, what is your preparation like when you don't know if you're going to get into the game, and then all of a sudden you're you're thrown into you know the second half of a game that's already happening? I shouldn't ask what is your preparation like. More, what part of your preparation are you relying on most in those moments when you get thrust into a game like that? Yeah, for me, it's, it's all the work that I put in. You know, I work every day extremely hard um, for for the opportunity like tonight. Um, you know, it's tough, you know, going into the game and never knowing whether, whether or not you're going to play um, or, you know, going into a game and we are up by 20 and then coach puts you in the last two minutes of the game and uh, your legs aren't working like everybody else is on the court, you know, because they've been playing for a while. Um, but you have to love it. You know, for me, I've, I've enjoyed every single moment of this year uh, learning from these guys who um, have played here so long. I learned from Coach Brooks, learned from everyone. Um, and, you know, it really makes it a lot easier. When there's guys going through similar situations, you know, that we we got a group of us guys who don't play a lot and we call ourselves the trenches, you know, and uh, we work hard every single day. And I, I love being with those guys and we motivate each other um, by working hard on the court. You know, it's not just me in the gym every day alone. It's those guys, too. So. All right. And last question is Zach. Hey, G, for you. Uh... To, to just play alongside Russ and Brad um, and see what they're doing on any given night. How special has it been for you, kind of, you know, your first true NBA season to, to be along that ride? Um, it's been fun, you know, to learn and watch these guys uh, play at the highest level and be consistently great every night. You know, for Brad to score as much as he does every night, um, for Russell to be as dominant as he is every single night. A lot of people take it for granted, um, you know, and, it's not easy averaging a triple double or scoring as many points as Brad does. And uh, a lot of people just overlook that and it really is hard. So it comes to be right now. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you guys. Uh, well, Brad, uh, I'll start by asking you about Anthony Gill. Um, you know, Coach Brooks was talking about how proud he is for the opportunity that he got and took advantage of it. What did you say? What was your perspective? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it was it was exactly that, you know, taking advantage of an opportunity you're given. Uh, AG is one of our best teammates. You know, he's one of our hardest workers. Uh, he doesn't complain. He shows up every day and puts the work in. And as you always, you guys know, it's all about opportunity and uh, being ready when your name is called. And, you know, when it was called in the first half, he came in, gave us good minutes, and he ended up starting in the second half and, and continuing to do the same thing. So uh, it was a great game for him. It was, a, it was a hell of a game for him. We needed him to continue to play the way he was doing. And, 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him too, because he, he deserves it for sure. Seven straight wins. Um, that, you know, matches the longest win streak of, of your career going back to uh, the 2017 season. Just what's it been like being part of this, especially given all that you guys have been through this season to get to this point? That means a lot. Uh, you know, it's just a testament to our growth throughout the year. Um, you know, we had some of the you know, most craziest stories, you know, happening to our team, injuries and COVID and all that. And we never really had a chance to really be full. You know, we're still not full. Uh, but, you know, we got a lot of our guys back, got the guys off minutes, like I always say. And, uh, we're just playing our best basketball right now, and thankfully so. You know, right before, right before this last push. So, uh, you know, we're just, we're just like I always say, we're taking it a game at a time. We're not getting bored with success. We're not getting, you know, tired of doing, you know, what works for us. And uh, and we're continuing to put our best foot forward. You know, we can't take any steps back uh, or worry about what's happened in the past. We can only just continue to move forward a day at a time. Ava. Uh, Brad, you guys earlier in the year, I guess, hadn't always been able to make in-game adjustments, especially on defense. It certainly looked like you did tonight coming out in the third quarter. Did it? Did that feel like an easier transition for you with this team? And how are you guys, what was, I guess, the mindset that went into that or the adjustment that went into that? Uh, I mean, defense is just all about a will and a want to, you know, get the job done. And I think that's just, it's another thing is a testament to our growth. You know, we have to we all individually and as a team, you know, basically told ourselves we have to be better defensively in order for us to win. You know, it's, we know what our roles are. We know what we're capable of doing. We know who's going to have the, the ball the majority of the time on offense. You know, it's just controlling the controllables. You know, we can control our efforts on defense. Uh, you can control helping your teammate. You can control boxing out. Not everybody can control making shots because we'd be 100%. So, you know, it's just a matter of us just staying with that, staying grounded. Um, keeping some humility because we still haven't accomplished anything, but, you know, also be in the back of our heads hungry for more, you know, because we have success, you know, things have been working and we just got to continue to harp on those things and continue to perfect them. And we also asked you this earlier in the year about your relationship with Russ, but you guys have obviously been so um, hot lately during this streak. How has that on-court relationship evolved? Does it feel more nuanced now? Does it feel easier for you guys to play off of each other? Or has it pretty much been the same all year? Yeah, we just flow off each other. Uh, you know, I, I basically read his game and, you know, he's always aggressive and looking, you know, to create for guys. And he always just tells me to attack and score and and, and just be myself. So uh, it's just, it's grown. You know, it's it's been fantastic since day one. Uh, we've, we've both accepted each other. Uh, we both respect each other's game. Uh, and I feel like he just makes us a better team. You know, he continues to lift his teammates. Uh, and he challenges himself. He uplifted himself throughout the year, you know, so it's it's always great to be able to have a guy like that. And uh, our chemistry is going to continue to just continue to get better. Thanks, Brad. Mm -hmm. Brad. Hey, Brad. Um, D Dort's a very physical defender. And, and you seem to respond to physical defenders with offensive physicality yourself. When... When did you hit that point in your career that you realized you could kind of match any physical defender's physicality yourself? Uh, I would say growing up playing against my four football playing brothers. I, I think I can say playing against them all the time prepared me for a lot of physicality. Granted, as a young kid, the game is different. It's fast. You know, you're learning it. Um, but I've, I will say I've always been a physical caliber guy. I've never shied away from contact. I've always indulged in it. And I always respect guys who like Dort, who go out there and, and play hard. Like he's he's a physical specimen as is, you know, and he uses it to his advantage. And uh, it kind of uplifts me. It kind of forces me to, you know, be on my, my P's and Q's because you can't, you can't afford to, you know, have a, a guy like that clamp you, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're engaged and, and figuring out ways to create and stand, stand aggressive at all times. Uh, but I, I will credit my, my, all four of my brothers for, for that. Zach. Brad, there's no way you're going to know this because I know that would be a response, but you're, a, you're tied now and about to move into the top five in games played for the wizards of all time already <laughs> um 
just what does that mean to you? I know you've talked a lot about leaving a legacy with the franchise. Um, just seeing that now in that top five. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, how many? Who's in first? Well, uh, I believe uh, Wes on sale. Oh, Wes? How many games? A thousand? Something like that. I'll look it up while you answer. It's a lot of games. Uh, I mean, that's, that's huge. You know, uh, one, I just want to make sure I'm always healthy and I always feel like if I'm healthy, I'm always going to go out there and give it my all. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a testament to being here. Um, you know, this organization is great. Um, you know, I've, I've poured a lot into it and trying to make sure I'm on the floor. My first couple of years, I didn't have that luxury. Um, so, you know, the, on the back end, I always just try to make sure that my availability is is the best me. You know, when I'm available, I, you know, you can get you're going to get some good out of me. So. Uh, that's huge. You know, let's keep it going. 984. 584, that's what I'm at? All right. He's at 984 and you're at 595. Sheesh. Family nine years, it took me 500. God bless America. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Got to make some playoff games. All right, last question, Neil. Hey, Brad. Uh, first off, I, I like the jacket. My man. For you guys, you know, very early in the season, I remember Garrison saying, you know, you can't, we, we don't have that losing mentality as a team, even though, you know, we might be losing games right now. It seems, you know, very much easier said than done to like not fall into that mentality. How have you guys accomplished as a group this season getting to here where you guys are finally reaping the benefits of not having that losing mentality carry over? Uh, it's definitely a tough one because, you know, it's, it's one really hard to win in this league. Uh, we all know that. And nobody comes out, you know, giving you a game. And I've been on teams we've lost 10 in a row, and it's never fun. You know, it's, it's very hard to get out of that um, that mindset of just losing. You know, so it's, it's tough for sure. But, you know, when G said that earlier in the year, we believed it. You know, we believed in ourselves every step of the way. And it was just a matter of us just putting it together, you know, how – there was nothing no one else could do. It was nothing, you know, there was nothing new that you can point at that we didn't already know. You know, it was like, okay, how can we just put it together? And it just clicked. I have no idea what game it was. Uh, but, you know, we just started flowing. We started clicking, started defending. And it, it just took off from there. And, you know, once we started realizing that that was kind of our recipe for success, we stuck with it. Thanks, Brad. Yep. Hi, Brad. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. Neil, this is my, this is my supreme. I'm, I'm gonna get you one. Hey, appreciate it. If they're not, if they're not out of stock, I got you. It was going like hotcakes when I ordered. Looks comfortable. <laughs> How happy were you for Anthony Gill to, to step up tonight and, and get that opportunity and come through? Oh man, very excited, man. He put so much work in. I see him every day putting extra work in to get your number called and be ready to go. Um, it's a blessing for him, I know. Um, he's super excited. I'm super happy for him um, just on many levels because he do all the right things. And when you do all the right things, uh, you know, you're supposed to get rewarded. And, uh, you know, he got rewarded tonight. Neil. Hey, Russ. Very early in the season, you know, Garrison was like, you know, we might not be winning games right now, but we're not taking on that mentality of a losing team, feeling like we're a losing team. I'm sure it's easier said than done, but how have you guys gotten to this point where, okay, things didn't necessarily go great to start the season, but you guys just kept moving, kept pushing, and are able to now reap some benefits? Uh, just take one day at a time. You know, you always, like I've always said, um, since the start of the year, there's going to be ups and downs in the season. Um, main thing is always keep your best foot forward, stay positive, um, even when at the darkest times, uh, you know, through adversity is where, you, know, you show who you really are, um, not just when things are going well. So um, if you do that, it doesn't matter win or lose games, you always keep your head straight. And that's a part of my job to make sure that as, as a team, we make sure we do that. Is that something that you have noticed with your new teammates that, yeah, they're starting to learn that and they're starting to feel and believe that? Um, you know, I, I think so. I think it's a good thing. Confidence is a, a huge part of it. But not just that, but actually believing that you, you can do something great um, is another thing, and that's a part of keeping instilling that into their, uh, you know, mentalities and make sure they got that coming to every game. Thanks, Russ.
Yeah. Chase. Hey Russ, uh, you mentioned how hard Anthony Gill works. Uh, we've we've heard that from other people tonight. Um, how has he kind of earned your respect uh, with his his work ethic this year? Um, you know, I, I respect everybody, every player, uh, because the ability to get to this level, um, you got to have a, a mutual respect. Um, and once you get here, um, is what you do with the opportunity. Um, and Anthony works his tail off every single day, every morning. Uh, he does all the right things, and like I said. Um, when you see that happen, you want to make sure guys like that get rewarded. Um, and it's a blessing to be able to see him on the floor and then do great things. And um, in the second half, there was a, a moment where I think you got a whistle for like kicking the ball under the basket. And um, I'm just wondering kind of like what happened in that moment. Was that just kind of like out of frustration or, or what was no, I wasn't on? frustrated. I just kicked the ball, delayed game. Why would I be frustrated? We have 12 points, 14 points. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't frustrated, but um just you know doing russell things just you know in the game nothing nothing about it honestly cliff yeah russ what was it like being in this building known to be one of the loudest buildings in the league with no fans now it's definitely different that's different especially for me coming here being so silent, uh, that's a little different. I'm pretty sure it's probably different for those guys too in the other locker room as well. All right, last question to Christos. Art, from your perspective in the last seven game stretch for your team and how comfortable you feel in that building tonight? Uh, in this one? Yes. Oh, well, very comfortable. I was here for a while. And about the last seven games, what is the most impressive part for your team? And the win that um, you You know, I think for us, we just uh, trying to take one game at a time. Like I said, you move forward, you take one game. This game is now behind us. Now you got to get ready for the next next matchup and uh, go from there.